Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video and today I'm going to be recreating a mission that never were. That's right, I'm going to be recreating the Skylab 2 mission. And I don't mean the second crewed expedition to the Skylab 1 space station. I'm talking about the proposed Skylab 2 space station. Now, Skylab 1 actually shares a lot in common with the current SLS program. It was sold on the economy of using leftover Apollo program parts in much the same way that SLS was sold on using old space shuttle hardware. Skylab was a cost-effective solution that used Apollo elements for a low Earth orbit space station to address many burning questions about human spaceflight, in particular the effects of long-term weightlessness on the human body. Skylab was launched in one go, unlike modular space stations like the ISS, Mir or Tianzhou space stations, and this was possible because of the massive lift capability of the Saturn V rocket. It could place the entire Skylab space station plus consumables for three missions of three astronauts in just one launch. So enter Skylab 2. Proposed in 2013, during which NASA was developing the Space Launch System, which offers Saturn-like lift for even larger diameter payloads, the big unique selling point for this space station was that it would be constructed as a wet workshop, with the main section of the station being a spent upper stage hydrogen fuel tank from the SLS. Interestingly, there was a proposition for the original Skylab station to be built in this manner as well, using the spent bipropellant tanks of the Saturn V third stage. Reusing a spent fuel tank carries quite a lot of advantages. For starters, it's effectively zero mass, given that it's used by the launch vehicle during the ascent. It's also really, really big. The SLS hydrogen tank has a diameter of 8.5 metres and a height of just over 11 metres, putting its volume to be about the same as a two-storey house. Now, the study proposed by the Advanced Concepts Office of the NASA Marshall Space Flight Center didn't really give too many specifics in what the inside of the station would look like. They did suggest perhaps installing an International Space Station style module inside the hydrogen tank and then filling the space between the module and the walls of the tank with water to act as a radiation shield. Because another cool thing about Skylab 2 is that it would have been located at the Earth-Moon L2 Lagrangian point, which is the same place as the current James Webb Space Telescope. It therefore would have been very important to have adequate radiation shielding for the crew since the station would have been beyond the protection of the Earth's geomagnetic field. And speaking of the space station, there it is, the fairings have deployed. This shouldn't be a surprise to you what it looks like because you just watched me build it, but I didn't really talk about the build process because I was going off on a big spiel about the history of the Skylab 2 mission, but I feel like I've adequately summarized it so I can quickly talk about the design of this rocket. Now obviously in Kerbal Space Program you can't, you know, separate tanks into their individual liquid fuel and oxidizer segment. So I've kind of just got two fuel tanks here and I've just split the stage up like this. And this is my Skylab 2. Now it's very overbuilt compared to the real proposition because obviously wet workshops aren't a thing in Kerbal Space Program. You can't convert fuel tanks into laboratories. So I sort of added a space station to the fairing inside the fairing and then we've just got this fuel tank attached that we can go up and modify and pretend to turn into a crew module because you know, if this thing were real it would the fuel tank would require some modification by an astronaut or a robot or probably a combination of the two in order to make it habitable but there is my basic station there so I did mention that the real Skylab 2, if it well, if it were real, the real mission would have had it being placed at the L2 Lagrangian point, which unfortunately is not possible in Kerbal Space Program. Kerbal Space Program has very has a relatively simple physics model. It doesn't do multi-body physics, so there's no such thing as Lagrangian points in this game. So I thought of a couple of ways I could kind of mimic a Lagrangian point to place the space station in. One idea was maybe just getting a mod and placing a invisible planet just orbiting around Kerbin really far out and then having my spaceship orbit this invisible planet to kind of mimic a Lagrangian point, but I don't know, it would have been a bit naff, would have been kind of a little bit cheaty as well. And also, I don't know anything about modding and I didn't want to bother any of my modding friends to sort something out for me. So instead, uh, well, actually, I'm going to save that as for a surprise later on in the video because now I am constructing the Orange Boy rocket. Wait for it. 
there's 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 the orange part there this is just going to take our crew up to the skylab 2 space station and it also contains some parts to convert the spent stage into a habitat module in ways that you will see later on uh it's a, not the most amazing thing don't get don't get your hopes up basically but i i take a pretty good old crack at trying to make the uh the fuel tank look like a convincing space station whether or not i succeeded in this task uh you'll have to be the judge let me know in the comments down below and hey while you're down there you know i gotta ask make sure you hit that like button smash that subscribe button ring that bell so you get this garbage in your sub box whenever i feel like uploading kerbal space program content i try and make as as much as i can uh making it every single saturday probably was not resulting in the best work-life balance for me and i think it was starting to affect the quality of the content so now i've reduced the uh you know the the, the the upload cadence of Kerbal Space Program content. I'm hoping it's reflecting uh, that I'm, the, the content is getting better. Again, you guys let me know down in the comments what you think. And hey, while you're down there, make sure you subscribe and smash that like button. I've already done this bit. Here I am launching the Orange Boy. Uh, it's not... I didn't really talk anything about the launch because it's a fairly... It's a fairly standard launch. It's not the most exciting rocket either. <laughs> I know, I'm really, really selling this mission, aren't I? If this were the real mission, this would have been an SLS uh, rocket launching the crew, probably on an Orion capsule. Uh, but, you know, the SLS configuration would have been extremely overkill for this particular mission in Kerbal Space Program. Kerbin is a much more forgiving planet to escape than Earth is, so you don't really need as big of a launch vehicle to get to low Kerbin orbit when compared to low Earth orbit. Uh, but I think, you know, the Saturn, the Saturn V, the SLS I used for the first launch looked okay. The fairing was a bit tall because, like I said earlier, I had to kind of make the lab a bit bigger than it would have been in the proposition because I wanted there to actually be a functioning laboratory on board. And, um, oh gosh, what was the other thing I was going to say? Yeah, I wanted to quick, I wanted to mention the fact that it's gone, it's, it's, it's long gone now. But some people might have been curious as to why the final stage, the cryogenic propulsion stage, was upside down in the SLS. So the stage one and stage two were the right way up. But then in order to fire up that third stage, I had to do basically a 180. And the actual proposed diagrams uh, of, you know, the Skylab 2 launch vehicle do actually appear to show the engine in this configuration where it was facing the wrong way at the top of the stack. I don't know if I've just interpreted the diagram wrong. Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to smash that like button, etc, etc. But I think uh, that's, that's, I think that's what the diagram is showing here. <laughs> and here we are arriving at the space station here. Now I did consider getting to the space station a little bit earlier than where I am now, like right as I entered orbit for the first time, getting an encounter straight away with the space station, which I have done before, and well, I'll get to this in a second, but I decided not to do that because I like getting my arrivals with dockings and stuff to be on the light side of the planet, and getting to an immediate docking position straight after launch would have meant we'd be arriving on the nighttime side of the planet and it would have been really hard for you guys to see especially with the YouTube video compression it makes videos really really dark so it wouldn't have been great now going back to what I just said where I'm going to talk about this later this was actually the third time that I had arrived at this <laughs> this space station with this rocket so basically a lot of the time with these Kerbal Space Program videos I don't actually do any sort of rehearsals or tests I just design the rocket and think to myself, yeah, that looks about right. I'm just going to launch it and film it. And usually that works pretty well. But in this case, I got to this space station here. And then it turned out I didn't check the Delta V in the space station stage. And I couldn't actually get out beyond low curve in orbit. So the whole thing had to be scrapped. I had to start again. Uh, so I did this mission here. And I arrived at the station and started doing all the modifications that I'm now doing for you guys that you can see on screen making all the modifications to that stage turning it into a space station but I brought the wrong sized docking port I brought a junior sized docking port which meant I couldn't dock the uh you know the the command module to the space station how I wanted to so that was a shame I had to revert the flight it wasn't quite as catastrophic as the first time where I had to redo the entire video from the beginning, like redo the SLS flight as well, uh, but it was still kind of a, a minor annoyance. And here are my uh, changes I've made to the fuel tank to make it a little bit more homely. I've added some 
you know, ladders so kerbals can traverse the outside. And I added four circular lights thinking that they would look like windows, but I didn't check how big they were and it turns out that they're, they're actually really small and they don't look like windows, they just look like spotlights. So, it, you know, it's a bit of a... It's a bit janky, you know, could have turned out a lot better. But I'm still happy regardless, and I hope the crew are happy as well. They could transfer through that beautiful, homely second stage, uh, fuel stage, sorry, and get to the uh, the prime lab at the front and the cupola module that is unfortunately uh, having its view obscured by the cryogenic propulsion stage. But we need that stage to get to the Lagrange point equivalent that I came up with. So this is my epic plan, guys, and I'm, I think... I think you're gonna like it. So I wanted to at least fulfill the objective of Skylab 2 where we go way beyond the surface of the moon or mun in this case because it is pronounced mun guys there's no umlaut. Do not at me. <laughs> but then like I don't want to just go out to like orbit Minmus and that's the video because that's not I don't know a bit anticlimactic. So what I thought was well I will exit Kerbin's sphere of influence into a solar orbit but make it so that my solar orbital period is such that by the time I've completed one orbit around the sun and cross over Kerbin's orbital plane, I'll just naturally re-encounter Kerbin and re-enter its atmosphere. This journey will take me nearly two years, during which the Kerbals on board the station can complete numerous scientific studies into the effects of prolonged weightlessness on the Kerbin body. Although well, thinking about it now, I could just go and ask the Kerbals I abandoned on my Elu space station four years ago. Um, four years in Earth years, what's that in Kerbin years? Probably too much. I haven't, I haven't sent any supplies over to them. They're probably... Ah, no, they're, they're probably fine. Kerb Kerbals run on photosynthesis, right? That's the leading theory. And at Elu, that far away from the sun, uh, photosynthesis probably isn't as, you know, effective as it is on Kerbin. But I don't want to dwell on the fate of my Kerbals that I've abandoned on my Elu space station. Let's just ignore that, guys. I've built a career on rescuing Kerbals. I don't want to draw attention to the dark side of Laon Aerospace. Although thinking about it, it wasn't four years ago. It was 2016. I'm still stuck in the mindset that it's still 2019 because, like, let's let's face it, I think we can all agree that 2020 and 2021 and so far 2022 has all just felt kind of like the same crappy six-month span. So really, my brain's lagging, you know? I need to put on time warp in my brain. Nah, no, that was a dumb Kerbal Space Program reference. Here we are! This is the orbit around the sun, quickly changing the subject here. We are Kerbals have begun their journey into the study of Kerbal weightlessness because no Kerbal has ever been on a space station longer than six months in Laon Aerospace and I can guarantee that 100%. Do not, do not check out my other videos but you should like and subscribe this video in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts. What's your favorite fruit? Mine's bananas. Actually, it's probably grapes. That's dumb. That's <laughs> uh, we're going to do some scientific experiments now. You know, it's been it's been a little while <laughs> since our Kerbals left Kerbin. So we can do some scientific experiments. Do a little EVA. The first EVA any Kerbal has ever done ever in, uh, you know, a deep space, interplanetary space. And we can just do a few other things as well. And actually what I did was I made sure our Kerbal took the scientific data from the Capola module, because that's where we've got a crew report stored, and from the lab, we've got everything else stored, and store it on this uh, piece here, rather than, you know, the main space station, just because our, uh, when we encounter Kerbin, we're going to be hitting its atmosphere straight away, and the space station, spoiler alert, guys, it ain't going to survive re-entry. That's why we've got that re-entry module just there. The reason I left the uh, engine segment attached to the re-entry module is because that's kind of the emergency ferry. So if a Kerbal develops some sort of rare disease, you know, they suddenly catch lupus, then, you know, we can quickly ferry them back to Kerbin. But thinking about it, I don't think we can really meaningfully speed up the amount of time it takes to encounter our home planet with the amount of Delta V we have in that stage. But luckily, we never had to consider that as an option. But I just wanted the, uh, I wanted the facility there just in case we needed it. Now, for some reason, my Kerbin encounter sort of changed itself from the uh, encounter I set it as all those years ago. Well, all those one year and 423 days ago when I initially set up our course around the sun. So I had to quickly make an adjustment using our cryogenic propulsion stage. And then it comes to re-entering Kerbin's atmosphere. And I'm doing a uh, epic stunt here where I'm detaching as late as I possibly can just so that 
Whilst we're re-entering the atmosphere, the Kerbals have a nice firework display to watch. Although, thinking about it, they probably won't have that great of a view of it, considering the fact that... Well, first of all, they'll be terrified, right? Because there are massive explosions happening right next to them. But secondly, the, uh, you know, the plasma flames licking the sides of the glass of the command module, probably obscuring things quite a bit anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I just sort of... Staying quiet for the explosions. The barrage of explosions. Okay, they're all done now. And uh, yeah, that's the... Uh, there is our re-entry. So I hope that this was an enjoyable mission to watch. And maybe you learned something that you knew about the Skylab 2 mission. I certainly hadn't heard of it until I discovered it on a Wikipedia rabbit hole binge. And found out about it. And then said, hey, this would be a great thing to do in Kerbal Space Program. And now the rest is history. And hopefully it's a good piece of history. Not a disappointment in history. Let me know your thoughts down below and remember to smash that like button guys as we uh, descend the uh, with the parachutes. That's it. I don't think I've got anything else I needed to say about this mission other than thank you so much to my patrons and channel members who help make what I do possible. Uh, their generosity really, I cannot understate it. I really, really appreciate all the support of you guys. And if you want to join, there's ranks. You can do so by clicking the link on screen or via the links below. Uh, there's two videos from my channel on screen as well. Hopefully they're good picks to you. I think that's it. I've said my piece. Thanks for flying with me today and I'll see you all next time.